Welcome back to Blood Sugar Squad, your go-to channel for simple, actionable tips to manage diabetes and live your best life. Today, we're tackling something serious, something that every diabetic or anyone who loves someone with diabetes absolutely must know about. It's called diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA for short. You may have heard the term before, but do you really know what it means, how it happens, and how to recognize it before it turns life-threatening? In this video, we're breaking it all down. By the time we're done, you'll not only understand DKA, you'll be equipped with the knowledge that could one day save a life. Disclaimer, I'm not a doctor, and this video is for educational purposes only. It's not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you have concerns about your health or symptoms of DKA, please contact your healthcare provider or seek emergency medical care right away. Segment one, what exactly is DKA? So let's start at the very beginning. Your body normally uses glucose or sugar as its main source of fuel. Insulin, the hormone that people with diabetes need to replace or supplement, acts like a key. It unlocks the door that lets glucose move from the bloodstream into the cells. But when there isn't enough insulin, that key no longer works. The glucose is stuck in the blood, unable to get inside the cells where it's needed. Your body, always needing energy, doesn't just sit around waiting. Instead, it turns to burning fat as an emergency fuel source. That might sound like a decent backup plan, but it comes with a big catch. Breaking down fat in large amounts produces acids known as ketones. A few ketones aren't usually dangerous, but if this process keeps going unchecked, ketones build up in the blood, making it more and more acidic. When the blood tips too far into acidity, the body's delicate balance is disrupted. That state, when ketones overwhelm your system and the blood becomes toxic, is what we call diabetic ketoacidosis. Segment two, who is at risk? You may be wondering, does this apply to me or only to certain people with diabetes? The truth is that anyone with diabetes can develop DKA, but it's far more common in type 1. People with type 1 rely entirely on insulin from outside the body, so if that insulin is missed, delayed, or interrupted, the body can very quickly shift into fat-burning mode and start producing ketones. For people with type 2, DKA is less common, but not impossible. Severe illness, infection, or very high blood sugars can push them into the same dangerous cycle. And here's another twist. DKA sometimes shows up as the very first sign that someone has diabetes at all. Many people discover they have the condition only after landing in the hospital with their first episode of DKA. Segment three, what triggers DKA? DKA doesn't just come out of nowhere. Something usually pushes the body over the edge. For some, it's as simple as missing insulin doses. Even skipping a few injections or having a pump malfunction can quickly start the process. For others, it's being sick. Think of infections like the flu, pneumonia, or even a simple stomach bug. Illness ramps up stress hormones in the body, which work against insulin and send blood sugar climbing. Sometimes, people are taking medications, such as steroids, or in certain cases, newer diabetes drugs, that make it harder for insulin to do its job. And in those who don't yet know they're diabetic, the trigger is simply untreated high blood sugar running unchecked. So while the specifics may differ, the pattern is the same. Too little insulin, combined with too much strain on the body, sets the stage for ketones to take over. Segment four, symptoms you must recognize. Now, here's the part that really matters. Recognizing DKA before it becomes a full-blown crisis. The early signs can creep in over several hours. At first, you might notice being thirstier than usual, drinking glass after glass of water, and making frequent trips to the bathroom. That's your body's attempt to flush out excess sugar. Along with that comes high blood sugar readings, often above 250 milligrams per deciliter. As ketones rise, nausea and vomiting often appear, sometimes with stomach pain that can be mistaken for food poisoning or a stomach bug. Breathing may become rapid and unusually deep. This is your body's attempt to blow off acid. A classic clue is fruity smelling breath caused by a specific ketone called acetone. Energy levels drop, confusion or difficulty concentrating sets in, and if the process isn't stopped, the person can eventually lose consciousness. Here's a short recap of the hallmark warning signs. Intense thirst and frequent urination, high blood sugars and ketone levels, 
nausea, vomiting, and stomach pain, deep, labored breathing, and fruity breath, extreme fatigue, confusion, or even coma in advanced cases. If you or someone you know with diabetes shows these symptoms, especially in combination, it's time to act quickly. Segment five, why DKA is so dangerous. Some people might think DKA is just a rough patch of high blood sugar, but that couldn't be further from the truth. DKA doesn't just stress the body, it destabilizes it. Severe dehydration occurs as fluids are lost through frequent urination and vomiting. Electrolytes, those tiny minerals that keep your heart and muscles functioning, are thrown wildly out of balance. In rare but devastating cases, swelling can occur in the brain, especially in children. Left untreated, organ systems begin to shut down and death can follow. That may sound frightening, but here's the key message. DKA is highly treatable if it's recognized and treated quickly. Segment six, how DKA is treated. So what happens once someone with DKA reaches the hospital? Treatment usually starts immediately with intravenous fluids. Rehydrating the body is step one, diluting the sugar in the blood and helping restore circulation. Alongside fluids, electrolytes like potassium are carefully replaced because insulin treatment can shift these levels rapidly and dangerously if not monitored. The cornerstone, of course, is insulin. In the hospital, it's given through an IV drip, allowing doctors to precisely control how quickly glucose moves back into the cells and how fast ketones disappear from the blood. With the right balance of fluids, electrolytes, and insulin, the body begins to stabilize. The blood becomes less acidic, and within hours to days, recovery is well underway. Segment seven, how to prevent DKA. Now here's the part we all want to focus on, prevention. The majority of DKA episodes can be avoided with careful self-management. That means never skipping insulin, even on days when you're not eating much. Remember, your body needs insulin all the time, not just when food is on the table. Monitoring ketones is another powerful tool. If your blood sugar stays above 250 for several hours, or if you're sick, test for ketones using urine strips or a blood ketone meter. Staying hydrated is simple but critical. Water helps flush ketones out before they can build to dangerous levels. Another important step is to have a sick day plan worked out with your doctor. Illness often increases insulin requirements and knowing in advance how to adjust can stop DKA before it starts. And if you're a pump user, make a habit of checking for leaks, empty reservoirs, or kinks in tubing. Those small issues can have big consequences if they interrupt insulin delivery. Segment eight, when to seek emergency help. But what if despite your best efforts, ketones still climb? That's when you need to recognize that home management isn't enough. If you have moderate or large ketones that don't come down with extra insulin, or if you're vomiting and unable to hold down fluids, that's your sign to get emergency care. If breathing becomes rapid, fatigue turns to confusion, or your blood sugar refuses to budge, don't wait it out. These are urgent, get to the hospital now situations. Closing recap. So let's put it all together. Diabetic ketoacidosis is the body's emergency signal that it doesn't have enough insulin. It's a condition that develops when ketones overwhelm the blood, turning it acidic and dangerous. It's more common in type one diabetes, but possible in type two, and it can even be the very first sign of undiagnosed diabetes. The good news is that you can prevent most cases by staying consistent with insulin, checking for ketones, keeping hydrated, and having a plan for sick days. And if symptoms do appear, knowing what they look like and acting quickly can make all the difference. Knowledge is power. In this case, it's the kind of power that could save a life, yours or someone you love. Until next time, stay strong, stay sweet, but not too sweet, and keep thriving with the Blood Sugar Squad.